I want to talk about animation. Uh, it's one of those things that it's, it's very appealing for everybody to go and put a lot of animation on rotation or things moving around the screen. But animation can, um, you know, it, it can be used for emphasis, but it shouldn't be used gratuitously. The rule for bright colors also applies to animation. You shouldn't use it to illustrate a normal situation or process. No spinning pumps, no moving conveyors, no splashing liquids, etc. So only use limited animation to highlight abnormal situations. And animation should not be in the background. It should be used to get somebody's attention. So all these techniques that I talked about previously, certainly it makes your HMI look less appealing or aesthetically ple pleasing. Uh, and that's for, by design. The design is to let the, have the operators, get the operators the most information on screen that they could use to reduce their reaction time and to get more, you know, to be able to run that process more effectively. So if we, let's look at a before and after demonstration. So you can see if we apply these techniques that I talked about before, what you would see a traditional HMI look like and what you would see, you know, a, a, an HMI looks like after we apply all these different techniques. So here's a more traditional HMI screen. And uh, this is where I can see I have some tanks, I have a PNID diagram, I have uh, some pumps and motors and, and various process values on the screen. Also in the bottom <laughs> right, I can see a little um, alarm display just to let me know if there's any alarms that are happening. So we have a lot of, there's blinking states here, like this pump over here is blinking for the state that it's in. Um, but what's going on here is the use of colors, you know, again, the operator has to be trained in what those colors represent. Um, and the also operator has to be trained on if, what the actual ranges are for these different process values, like the temperatures, you know, this gallons per minute on the flow meter, uh, and various things like that. And so when an alarm happens, if the alarm only shows up in the banner down the bottom right, they have to then think about what that alarm really indicates. You can put other indicators on the screen that people have done, but that's kind of the, this is kind of the traditional that people work with. Now if we apply the, those techniques that I talked about here, this is the sort of screen that we'd be getting to. Definitely a more grayscale screen, right? The background is, uh, you know, very much grayscale, and um, here we only emphasize colors when there is a potential issue. Like you can see on the indicator down here at the bottom, it being the red, there is certainly that is a low, low alarm on this particular pump. On the tank here, I can see this little indicator pop up from time to time. That is like a, a, a triangle that faces down. We, that's actually called an alarm indicator that the handbook also talks about. And it um, has redundant coding built into it. As you see here, this red uh, square is uh, letting me know it's a high critical alarm. And the value 1 also means it's a critical alarm. So we get three things. We get a square, we get the red color, and we get the number one. Let me know that there's a potential issue. And so redundant coding can work for a lot of things. And especially there's indicators here. We have the ranges. You can also put a spark line chart to show more information about where it's trending to get you know, more information about it. Uh, so you see the spark line chart here being used on all the tanks. So I can see the trend of it. These are all simulation values. So you know, they're not you know, real process values, but at least I get an idea of what's happening. The radar chart over here in the top right, it gives me various process values. I can see if things are, you know, how things are, if, how are working, if they're in spec or out of spec. That's really something that's there. And lastly would be the actual color of the pumps and the, and the motors and things. You see all of my graphics are flattened. That's really important. You flatten the graphics and the colors represent the different states. So you can see a graphic like this one right here. Uh, that's right above the pumps. This graphic is uh, blends in with the background. You see the outline, but it blends in with the background. Whenever you have a color that blends in with the background, it means that there's no state to it. It just means that it's used for, you know, to, to kind of finish out the diagram on the screen. The ones down below, like the white ones, means that they're on, and the darker gray here means that they're off. The same thing with the pump and the valves. The white means that they're on, and the darker gray means that it's off. So if we apply these techniques, you can see that if we look at this screen, this is certainly ple more pleasing to look at and makes managers and, and, and people who, who uh, are going to pay the checks, they like this type of screen. It's good for you know, uh, how it's made and various things like that where they look at these displays. But this technique certainly allows operators to get the most out of that screen to really understand how the process is, is running, to get that, see how it's trending, to get their redundant coding, and to you know, really understand if problems ha happen. And the idea of this te these techniques is to also that we can hire new people 
and that there's really hardly any training. So we can get them up to speed and have them use this application much, much faster.